congratulations on purchasing a Briggs & Stratton pressure washer. We put this video together to help you get started. Before you start, be sure to thoroughly read your included operator's manual for all instructions and warnings. Although great to use around your home, pressure washers do present a risk of eye injury, as spray could splash back or propel objects. Make sure you wear proper safety goggles when cleaning or in the vicinity of your running pressure washer. In addition to the items in the box, you will need a utility knife, fresh unleaded fuel with no greater than 10% ethanol, a garden hose, petroleum or synthetic grease, and your safety goggles. If you have one, a funnel could also be very helpful. Let's get started. Open the carton completely by carefully cutting each corner from top to bottom. Remove everything from the carton except the pressure washer and ensure that you have all of the contents. Prior to assembling, lubricate all O-ring connections with petroleum or synthetic grease. If you have a fold-down handle, attach it by making sure the holes align, and then insert the bolts from the inside of the handle and attach the plastic knobs from the outside. If your handle doesn't fold, place the handle into the supports, making sure the holes align. Insert the bolts from the back of the unit and tighten the knobs onto the bolts from the front. The four-wheeled model is equipped with a three-position handle. Screw the handle pin into the bracket on the left side of the frame. Simply pull the handle pin out and lift the handle to the desired position or release the pin to lower the handle, making sure the latch locks into place. Attach the accessory tray by placing it over the holes and inserting the tree clips. If you have a detergent tank, place it over the holes on the handle supports, pushing the tree clips in until they sit flat against the tank. If you have the four-wheeled version, you will have multiple accessory holders. Install the hose wrap over the holes on the end of the unit using three screws and the provided hex key wrench. Insert the spray gun holder through the holes on the right side of the frame. Attach the plastic knob from the inside of the unit. To hold the wand, attach the metal spring clips with screws to the left side panel and simply place the accessories in their appropriate spots. You may have three or four spray tips depending upon which model you have. If you have the four-wheeled model, install the wheels by lifting the corner of the pressure washer, sliding the caster wheels into the bottom of the tubing, and tightening the collar of the wheels to secure in place. Slide the flat washer, wheel, and another flat washer over the axle stud. Lift the corner of the washer slightly and slide the axle stud through the mounting bracket. Insert the retaining pin through the hole on the axle stud to secure in place. Repeat for the second wheel. Roll it outside to a flat, level surface for the remainder of the setup. Fill the engine with oil before attempting to start it. To prevent debris from entering the engine, clean the area around the oil cap before removing the dipstick. Slowly pour oil into the opening until it reaches the fill line on the dipstick, being careful not to overfill it. Replace the cap when finished. As with the oil, clean around the fuel cap before removing it. Use only clean, fresh, unleaded gasoline with a minimum of 87 octane. Gasoline with up to 10% ethanol is acceptable, but do not use E15 or E85 fuel. Mix in any oil or modify the engine to run on any alternate fuels. To protect the fuel system from gum formation, besides using fresh fuel, you should also mix in a fuel stabilizer. Briggs & Stratton Advanced Formula Fuel Treatment and Stabilizer protects your engine against corrosive effects of ethanol and maintains fuel stability for up to three years. Slowly add fuel, being careful not to overfill. When finished, replace the fuel cap and let any spilled fuel evaporate before starting the engine. Although powerful and safe when used correctly, running engines give off carbon monoxide, an odorless, colorless, poisonous gas. Breathing it in could result in death, serious injury, nausea, or fainting. So it's very important to operate outdoors and never inside of a building or enclosure, even if windows and doors are open. 
Keep at least five feet of clearance on all sides, including overhead. And make sure you have installed battery-operated carbon monoxide alarms inside your home and that they are all in proper working order. If you haven't already, remove the shipping caps from the pump's high-pressure outlet and water inlet before attaching the hoses. Attach one end of the high-pressure hose to the base of the spray gun. Attach the other end to the pump outlet. Make sure the garden hose inlet screen is clean of any debris before connecting to your water supply. Run cold water through it for 30 seconds to clean out any excess debris. And then, turn the water off so you can attach it to the water inlet. Before starting the engine, put on your goggles and connect and fully turn on the water supply. With the spray gun pointed in a safe direction, push the red safety button and pull the trigger until water comes out. This releases air from the system. Attach the nozzle extension to the spray gun and attach a spray tip. You may have to twist or lightly tug on it so that it snaps into place. You may start your engine differently depending on your model. If you have ready start, you do not need to prime or choke the engine to start it. Simply turn the engine stop switch to the on position. If you have a primer bulb, make sure to push the engine stop switch to the on position and push the primer bulb three times firmly for a cold engine only. Skip priming if the engine is already warm. If your engine has a choke lever, turn the fuel valve to the on position, pull the choke rod to the closed or choke position and move the engine stop switch to the on position. If you have electric start, make sure the battery cable has been attached and the battery is charged. See your operator's manual for more information. Turn the fuel valve to the on or one position, the throttle to the fast position, and if your engine is cold, move the choke lever to the choke position. Turn and hold the key in the start position until it starts. If your battery is discharged, you can use the recoil cord to manually start your pressure washer. You should never pull the starter cord without first relieving the spray gun pressure and also be aware that the cord could kick back and pull your hand and arm toward the engine faster than you can let go, which could cause injury. For this reason, slowly pull until you feel resistance and then pull rapidly to start it. If it fails to start, release the high pressure before attempting to start again by pulling the trigger on the spray gun. After starting it, if you have a choke rod, slowly move it to the open position as the engine warms. If it falters, close and reopen the choke. If you don't have a choke, you can skip this step. When you are ready, firmly grasp the spray gun and point it towards the surface to be cleaned. Disengage the trigger lock button and pull the trigger to begin. To change the tip, release the trigger, which will automatically re-engage the safety lock, and simply switch out the current tip. Depending on your model, you will have up to five of the following tips. A black low pressure tip for applying cleaners and detergent. A magenta low pressure jet soap tip for quick high flow cleanup and long reach cleaning of second story siding or windows. A white 40 degree high pressure tip for delicate rinse or gentle cleaning such as patio furniture, RVs or boats. A yellow 15 degree high pressure tip for general rinsing or most all purpose cleaning such as home siding or brick patios. A red zero degree high pressure tip for maximum rinsing for stubborn or hard to reach surfaces such as oil stains or rust removal. A zero degree cyan jet flush tip for quick high flow cleanup and long reach cleaning. If you've used the detergent tank, you should first flush the pump out before shutting your pressure washer down by running it for one to two minutes with a non-soap high flow nozzle setting. If you've used the detergent siphoning hose, place the siphoning tube end into a bucket full of clean water and flush it out for one to two minutes using the black soap tip. To stop the washer, release the trigger and let the engine idle for two minutes. Once it's idled, if you don't have a choke, simply turn the engine stop switch to the off or zero position. If you have a choke throttle lever, stop the engine by moving it to the slow position and then to the stop position. Rotate the fuel shutoff valve to the off position 
and turn off the water supply. Relieve all retained high water pressure by pulling the spray gun trigger and let the engine cool. Disconnect the hoses and empty the pump of all liquids. You can do so by pulling the recoil handle about six times. Store your pressure washer in a clean, dry place. Fold the handle down for compact storage by simply loosening both knobs to the unthreaded section of the bolts and folding forward. Additional long-term storage, maintenance, or care information can be found in your operator's manual. We also recommend the use of the Briggs & Stratton Pump Saver, which helps protect against freezing, provides longer pump life, maintains seals and pistons, and prevents harmful buildup of hard water mineral deposits within the pump. If you have any questions, we can help. Simply call our customer service line toll-free at 1-800-743-4115 or visit briggsandstratton.com.